morning and welcome to Upton's Historical Museum. I'm Barbara Burke and this is our president. Past president. <laughs> Secretary. That's right. Secretary Tom Bear. We'll be showing you where we spend so much of our time working on Upton's history. As you know, we have published five books, and I'm in the process of working on another history, dealing with the different departments and the people who have made our town work. Let me begin by walking around the room and telling you something of our exhibits. This is the schoolhouse clock. It formerly was in the uh, town hall in the old town library, which is located where the present selectman's room and offices are. The bells here represent our first district schools. Because there weren't buses at that time, they used the bells to start school bring the children in, and also to dismiss them at the end of the day. This case is devoted mainly to the Civil War veterans and things that happened in the 18th century. Many people who come in ask, why do you have that large picture of the Andersonville prison? It's one of the few in the country that is in the condition ours is. We lost several of our men at that prison. These are pictures and executive and articles that were given to us through the years. This cane was given to us by the old newspaper, the Boston Post. At that time, they gave out the canes to everyone who participated in the marches they had every year to commemorate our beginnings. You may have heard of the carpetbaggers from the north. Down at the bottom is the original copper bag of E.B. Stoddard. Mr. Stoddard was Upton's first manufacturer in that he dealt with goods which he shipped both during the Civil War and afterwards in the peacetime. He was before Knowlton. 
But those of us who knew him called him Pitto because his middle name was Peter. He was killed in Korea in 1950. I can't think of who they are. That's Bradish. Okay. Polly Dean Bradish. Yeah. She During was... the Civil War, Polly Dean Bradish owned the house at 10 North Main Street. And that house housed runaway slave. She and her husband, whose picture is beside her, were responsible for eating hundreds of slaves to safety. In one of our books, they go into more detail as to the escape route they used. And it does seem rather strange that although many were going to Canada, so many of them ended up in Worcester and in the different towns in New Hampshire. Can you describe the history of the banner here? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. That's a... I don't see the tag on that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the flags. I believe that was the 1812 conflict. Mm -hmm. We don't hear that much about the conflict in 1812. No. no. But our men was serving in that conflict. Most of us in Upton know of the different awards we were able to make with the high school. But even though they've been state champions several times, this banner here is the Excelsior banner, the baseball club won it, and it was in 1859 when they defeated Medway Union's baseball team and became the world champions. We are grateful to the selectmen and to our membership the selectmen gave us permission to have the banner exhibited so everyone would know when we were world champions. One of our members made this case to preserve it because if it was hanging and free, it would become weighted down and would not keep the beautiful colors in the banner. It's made of silk, so over time, just the weight of its own, its own weight will cause it to start tearing and separating, so that's why it's laying down. When the third and sixth grade comes, we'd like to demonstrate how 
the voting machine works. Third grade gives them a ballot question to vote on, and every student marks the ballot and deposits it. And we have town officials from students. And that told us there was one more vote made. We thank the town clerk, Kelly McElroth, for letting us have this machine when they put the new ballot boxes into service. As you can see, they used what we call cobbler's tools to design and make the different size boots. This is how some of them looked. A lot of the uh, shoes manufactured in the boot shops and so forth in, in New England were shipped to the south, uh, as I understand it, and, uh, and distributed to the slaves down there. So there was a big industry here to manufacture the shoes, but they manufactured a lot more than what were consumed here. We also have an extensive collection of service uniforms. What you're seeing here was donated by Laurie McNaughton in honor of the McNaughton family. Many of us get the shirts, but this is one of the few complete outfits. This is one of the original sewing machines from the Knowlton Hat, Hat Company. Uh, was used for stitching straw braid into hats. Uh, it's kind of a unique machine design, originally done with a treadle but motorized uh, at the point this was uh, being used. And we still have two members in our society that actually worked in the factory using these machines to stitch hats. Uh, Lainey Carroll was here recently and she was showing us how the, to thread the machine and she says, if you hooked it up, she could probably still sew, sew hats on the machine. <clears throat> Sam Aldrich, 1884. Okay. The marble clock was uh, presented by Honorable S.N. Aldrich in 1884 to the selectmen of Upton, and it hung in the town hall uh, for many years. But since it was hanging in the main hall, where they played basketball, which was the only basketball court in town at the time. They played basketball there a lot. The clock was getting damaged by stray shots with the basketball. So it was removed from the main hall and uh, eventually made its way over here. Uh, both this clock and the school clock uh, were reconditioned by Bob Frascator uh, when he was uh, alive and uh, both of these clocks are operational today. They just need winding. Below the clock is a display of chinaware and and uh, dishware sitting on what looks like a, a table but in fact it is a, a um, piano. Uh, if the cover is open you can see the keyboard inside and it, it belonged to um, Doctor, yes, uh, who was a dentist. 
uh, in town. So uh, it's kind of unusual. It still has a piano stool there and so forth. The two dresses that we see on display here uh, were found in the uh, Fisk property uh, by Bob Page when he purchased all the Fisk lumber mill and the, and the residence house there on the corner of, of Fisk and Main Street. So we have another example here of uh, Fisk uh, history. Many of our exhibits were from the Knowlton family who owned the hat shop in West Upton. We have a chest over there called the Knowlton Chest in which some of our documents were taken and now they're stored. This was in the dining room. And as you can see, when those who worked before us were in charge, they hid all the keys to this chest. And one day on a hunting mission in the society, we found the keys. And this chest has three that open each of the locks you see. Inside is another lock cabinet. We also have many of these lanterns that hung outside the different buildings in the town. To go back to our police exhibit, there are two lanterns there, which hung outside the original police station. They were on the Ball School building? Yeah. yeah before it was converted to a police station. And graciously, the police department figured it would be safer with us. This is one of the chairs we have, which was donated. And I believe this one was recovered, Tom. Uh, not by us. It came to us right in that condition. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, it's in beautiful condition. We have a string so people don't wear out. Trying to emphasize. That <coughs> beautiful fabric. Okay, what museum doesn't have a gift shop? So the Historical Society has a uh, a collection here of items that would be of interest uh, to people uh, both historical and souvenir wise. Uh, we have a, a selection of postcards showing some of the older buildings and scenes around town. Uh, we have five books for sale. Upton's Heritage Book. Uh, we, we have quite a few of these that talk about the uh, history of Upton. We have the Journey Through Upton Memories, which the Historical Society published completely right here in this office. Uh, we, Barbara was in charge of selecting stories from Upton's past and from her own memories, and uh, we composed and uh, we composed and, and chose photographs for the book. and. 
put it all together and sent it off to a printer in Ohio that prints these for us. Um, the Upton Pictorial History was done by a committee uh, of members back around 1992, 91, 92, 93, and it's a complete book of Upton's history through pictures and photographs uh, of various topics. There's some of the pictures of farms and stores and so forth. Um, this book wasn't really a historical society project, but we supported the, the writing of this book. John Robertson wrote this book on Old Marlboro Road about two Upton men who served in the Civil War. And uh, so when he finished this book and had it printed, he gave the books to the society to sell and we share the profits and the proceeds uh, between ourselves and the Historical Commission. Uh, this book was written in 17 or in, in 1935, and it describes the history of Upton from 1735 to 1935, and uh, so this is quite a good historical reference. This is the third third printing. Uh, the original printing was done for the uh, 200th anniversary, and uh, after that, the residual books were given to the society to sell and we sold out all of those and then the society had it reprinted by a publishing house which was quite expensive and then when those sold out last year we undertook a reprinting ourselves so we took the original book and photographed all the pages, converted it to text, and re recompiled the book with the pictures and text, designed the cover, and again had it printed at a print shop in Ohio. And Larry Doucette, who's working at the computer over there, did a lot of the work in, in compiling this and putting the pictures together and getting it ready to print. And these just came in like two weeks ago, so we have a new supply of these available for people. And you can see on the rack here, we have a collection of t-shirts, polo shirts, denim shirts, fleece jackets, and uh, Afghan blankets for sale. So anybody interested uh, in some souvenirs or history of Upton, we have some uh, items and some things for them here. Hi, Larry's currently under undertaking another project here and he is a, he's an avid photographer, so we put him to work. He's photographing all of these items that are in frames. We had over a hundred of them piled in the corners, and uh, you just can't have enough space to display everything in frames. So he's photographed them all so that they're available on the computer, and he's cataloged them all, and we set up a new storage location upstairs to keep them organized in a nice clean way but still have the ability here to view them and know what we have so much in there just go yeah. on to the toys mention mention this too <coughs> Interesting sign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the early uh, businesses in Upton are advertised on that sign. That probably came from the American Legion or the GAR Hall. I'm not sure offhand. GAR Hall. Yeah. And this photo here, what is this all about? Well, this is, this is uh, the Farmers Club cattle show in town and everybody came to Upton Center to, to see all the activities and uh, this particular uh, enlargement shows a wagon 
stairs coming down the back and was called the barge and uh, this was the town bus including the school bus if you wanted to get around up in sit on the bench and uh, they would shuttle you around town around the bottom you can see some of our third graders thank you note after they've had a tour or during their education day when they visit the selectmen and so forth they come here and we answer questions about our history as you can see many of them have original cards that they made up themselves which reflect their visit. This is that toy cabinet. I love this. It's an old kaleidoscope where this one you can wind up. <laughs> Here's some of the games they played. Dominoes. Our Jack in the Box is an original one. Down at the bottom are different dolls. The rag dolls were generally made by the children themselves or by their parents, and they received them for special holidays, be it Christmas or their birthday. These are original pictures, paintings by William Orms, who took the different buildings in town, such as the Congregational Church and the house on Elm Street and Upton's first dam. This is the boot shop, which is still standing. Mrs. Fosberg and the husband gave that building to the society with the stipulation it should be shown when anybody was interested in the different industries that have been there. This is one of about three or four maps that we have available for sale here, early maps of Upton. This one is, depicts uh, the town in 1735, and it was drawn and, and researched by Carl Blomquist and John Morrell. Uh, we have another one that's later on in the 1800s, and uh, some other one that shows district schools and so forth. We have a display case here, some more children's items. Uh, this chest was uh, was a, a doll's uh, bureau, and it was made in uh, Nantucket in 18, 1825, and uh, passed through various families, and then finally was donated to the to the society by Elvira Morrell. 
We have some more dolls and a lot of school books, early school books. Uh, a lot of times on the, when the when the third graders come on education day, I show them some of the school books that they used back then. Nowadays, everything seems to be transitioning to to using computers and the like. In this case, we have a display primarily hats. Of course, we have to have hats here where the hat business was such a, a large business at the time. And uh, it's really hard to, to identify hats that were actually made by Knowlton because he was more of a wholesaler and most of the hats that he sold were sold under other brand names, uh, Brewster being one of them. So if you see a Brewster hat, it's really probably made there in West Upton. Um, there's a story that goes that uh, an Upton resident was visiting France and touring France and thought, well, she'd like to buy a nice fancy hat <coughs> in France and uh, bring it back as a souvenir, which she did. And uh, when she got home, she looked a little bit closer at the tag and checked it out and found out it was made at Knowlton's. She went all the way to Paris to buy it. I bet you that was the most expensive hat in town for a while. This carving here is a wood carving made by Joseph Simpson uh, depicting the oxen on the uh, Knowlton farms. Uh, quite an amazing carving. Uh, but Mr. Simpson was confined to a, a wheelchair due to injuries in the Civil War. But he did a beautiful job in carving this uh, image of the oxen plowing the fields at Knowlton Farms in West Upton. The primary activity that we have here you can see it's not real busy, but we do have some volunteers that come in at different times. Uh, we have people here on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. But there's two primary activities that we're involved in here. One is to try to catalog and index all of this collection that has been collecting for 40 some years and originally was indexed and cataloged on 3x5 cards. We're trying to get that all into the computer so that anything in our collection can be located, searched, and uh, made available to people that are inquiring about our collection. Uh, a lot of inquiries that we get are from people who had ancestors or uh, in town or are interested in buying a house in town and they want to know the history of the house. So we do a lot for the public on uh, looking up the history of uh, families and homes and so forth in town. Our collection of artifacts, you've seen a large piece of it here, but we have, this is probably only a third to a half of all the artifacts that we have. Um, we also have a lot of records and photographs that are very, very valuable. On this case here, all of these albums are filled with photographs. There's over 8,000 photographs just here in these books, uh, not counting the ones that are framed. And uh, all of these photographs have been scanned and can be viewed in, through the computer and they're all indexed. Uh, all of the scanning was done by Bill Young. He uh, came in a few years back, decided that would be a nice project, and sat here week after week after week scanning thousands of photographs. So that's a very, very great uh, contribution to, uh, to our work here. In terms of journals and books and uh, scrapbooks and archives, documents and so forth, I did a rough calculation the other day. If we were to take all of that type of material valuable for research and line it all up on one bookshelf it would be 340 feet long that's how much material we have here that uh, supports you know the history of Upland and people doing research 
I've taken some items out here to show you as examples of uh, what we have. Here's a, here's a photograph, a couple of photographs, the upper one depicting ladies working in the uh, Knowlton Hat Factory, boxing hats. Here's another couple of the 8,000 photographs. Um, this is called the Arcade Block. That's opposite the, uh, the Town Common and the Holy Angels Church would be off there on the left. And Grove Street would be down here on the right. And then at the bottom we see the, uh, an image of the early, early image of the uh, Knowlton Hat Factory which doesn't quite look like that today because it was a hurricane that badly damaged the, the top floor and so they took the top floor off. Uh, this is a copy but I think we have the original of this. This is a ballot, specimen ballot, dated February 5th, 1917. So that was, uh, that was 100 years old, this specimen ballot and Bill Taylor used copies of this ballot uh, as examples when we had the third graders here and showing them the history of, of Upton. And speaking of the third graders, this is a response from them this year. They make up these cards, everybody gets to sign them and uh, put their comments on and they get delivered to, the, to us here. So the third graders, they really appreciate the fun on that education day. And uh, oftentimes they'll be bringing their parents in here afterwards to show them. This is Woolard store, typical of old time dry, dry goods stores. And this store was in West Upton. And uh, Hotel Pleasant. Nope. 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 The, the coffee street. bean. This oh, would have been right okay. in front of the coffee bean, right at the street. Yep. This is where this would have been located. And Looks like you missed it. You missed it? I must have missed it. <laughs> this is a picture of uh, what was originally the center school, the first large school they built in, in uh, Upton Center, which later became the Grange. So this building is still standing thanks to the Grange who were struggling to keep it, keep it together and keep it uh, viable and uh, shows a class, school class out front. So these are typical of a lot of the photographs we have there that are very, very old photographs. Now in terms of journals and documents, uh, this journal records vital statistics of Upton and it lists people when they were born, the families and so forth. The very first entry in the beginning of this book is a family 1734, 1724 excuse me, the first entry in here. So there's items, now 1724 sounds old but to put it into context, it was still under British rule. You know, this was this was a British uh, colony at that time. This book describes roads in Upton. Uh, I'm not sure of the date, but I think it dates back to the 1700s or maybe early 1800s. And it's a little it's a little confusing as to what it's actually, what its purpose was, but I've seen something like this in doing some of my own family research in that towns would designate different people to be in charge of maintaining different roads. And that seems to be what this is. Mm. It would give a person's name and then it would give a description of all the roads in his area. So if you were to take this and piece it all together, you could get a road map of Upton, a very early Upton. So this is uh, another quite, quite old ledger that we have. 
Another example is uh, like deeds and, and the like. This, this is a, uh, it says it's an indenture, the 15th day of June in the year of our Lord, 1914. So 1914, this, this uh, refers to as an indenture, but is basically a lease. Um, Eben T. Hall, who had this stone farm at the end of Grove Street and ran a dry goods store in town, leased land from the Grafton Upton Railroad adjacent to the railroad so that he could put up a storehouse next to the railroad so he could ship goods in and out of town. So this is his lease with the railroad company in, uh, in 1914. This item in this box is a uh, record of post 105 GAR up in Massachusetts. I wanted to do that one. Okay, you're on. Do it. Okay. <clears throat> we keep saying that the Historical Society does not buy anything. Everything we have was gifted or loaned to us. Though we have very few things that are on loan except from the town. The big exception is there was a woman on Plains, on Nelson Street, whose house was sold. The house had been built before the Civil War. And she decided to clean it out and her orders were anything that you don't want, she said to the auctioneer, either junk it or sell it. We don't care what you do with it. Well, obviously, she didn't realize just what this was. And it's a box which was ma uh, mandated by the governor of Massachusetts that every town had to record the um, war record of all their town's peoples. So it was presented to the J. Orson Fisk Post number 105 at two by Edward F. Knowlton and George W. Knowlton in 1890. What it actually is, as you can see, the names and pages of each veteran who served in the Civil War. The Harbacks, Havilands, Stone, Rockwood, which we have the Rockwood Farm still in existence. 
And then on each page, it gives, I just happened to turn to the uh, Rockwood again, but it lists every place he served during the Civil War. The only problem is it's not in alphabetical order. So it's best to use the index to make your job a little easier. We've had people come and ask to borrow this and now we copy it on or scan it as Tom. I don't think we've even scanned it yet. I think we probably maybe that would be a job for Larry to photograph the pages. It's uh, it's too delicate to try to put on the scanner bed. But yeah. before you turn the page, the page on the left, you see it's got a lot more writing. Yeah. A number of those records in there include personal recollections from the soldiers themselves, little stories about their service and where they've been and so forth. So it's uh, pretty much one of a kind information you won't find anywhere else. And the beauty of this is when it was brought up at a society meeting that this book was available, but because our bylaws say we cannot purchase anything, one person started the ball rolling saying, I'll donate so much money towards the purchase. And it ended up, they were asking $500 for the book itself. And the, it ended up, we collected much more than the $500. And so that remainder after purchasing the book is now in a special fund that if an object such as this comes up, we could, with the society's permission, vote to purchase. Okay, these are the various tools which were used in the different trades. I think it's obvious for carpenters to recognize two of the original planes. Block planes, yeah. Yeah. And augers. And the augers. This is a program from Upton's Farmers Club. The Farmers Club was formed in the 1800s, around 1870, and it uh, was uh, likened unto the Grange, which we still have in Upton on School Street, and every year they had a fall festival in which they would exhibit all of their grow different vegetables and fruits and uh, compete for prizes. The old 4-H also came from that organization. 
these are some of our original uh, plates we used to celebrate the anniversaries. Also, we're very proud of our school. Upton was among the first in Massachusetts to have a public school. Now we have Nipmuc, Misco, and Memorial School. But even back then, very early we shared first with Grafton and then more recently with Mendham. You can also see one of the bibs worn by the different people who worked in the W.G. Fisk Lumber Company. The Fisk family is another very old family from Upton. Well, they had the lumber mill on Fisk Ave near uh, Pleasant Street for many years, uh, which was resurrected by Bob Page and run for many years. They had a hardware store there on the uh, corner of Fisk and Main Street, which is uh, the building is still there. Uh, and we have quite a few other things here, include, including some dresses from the Fisk family at that time. As you can see, people have been extremely generous sharing the mementos. These are different paperweights of families. This is W. No, I'm sorry, George S. Ball, who was a selectman, a state rep, a state senator, and a huge benefactor to the town. Thankfully, we also have many of the uh, signs and things from the town department. This happens to be a police exhibit. Dan Bates, the first full-time police chief in Upton wanted an official car, but naturally cars weren't in the budget. So instead he used his own car driving around town, but to be official he hung this sign on the door of his car <laughs> to make sure everyone would know he was on official business. Would it be a <clears throat> parking me to get used? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows where there were parking meters in town, I wish you'd clue us in. We tracked down the fact someone thought that it might have been in front of Woods Drugstore in West Upton, but the last resource said it came from the police department and it was found in one of the police raids on some of the criminals who came to Upton to hide their merchandise. 
Well, now you've got an introduction to our museum and our organization in here. Uh, I'd like to point out that all of the work is done by volunteers here. Uh, there's no paid employees, and we are a registered nonprofit organization. And uh, although you don't see a lot of people here at any one time, we do have people uh, that open the museum uh, four days a week. And uh, we have a lot of people that volunteer and do work um, on the sides or special occasions and so forth. So there's probably 25 different members in town that uh, are active in some way or another. Uh, our total membership is about 130. Um, so if you've seen things here that uh, catch your interest or want to look around, feel free to come in on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Saturday mornings, and we'll be open. And uh, and we'll open on uh, other times if, uh, if you make arrangements ahead of time. So please come visit, take advantage of our resources. Okay, we can be reached uh, 529 Six six hundred, and we do have a Facebook page and a website, which is, which is.